Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the install that everyone and their mother has done, the Weber Carb install. We're going to be removing the, frankly at this point, useless factory carburetor. So, let's get into it. So as you can see, we have the factory carb off and just about every vacuum line and everything gone from here. And I'm not sure why, but this truck already has a plug here, 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 and down here. Um, from what I can tell, most of, well, every video that I've seen does not have those capped off. So you'll probably need to buy more caps and there's also two lines down here but I just circled this line over here back because with the Weber carb kit I think it comes with five and I need six so if you're doing this yourself pick up some vacuum plugs um, it'll make your life a lot easier especially if uh, you don't already have some of them plugged off like me so another thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to sand both sides of this plate here and you're going to need to sand the bottom side of this plate here because although it may look flat they aren't so you're going to need to find a flat surface in this case i'm just going to use this glass table i'm going to put sandpaper on it and then i'm going to sand down with a very fine grit sandpaper until it is mostly flat or at least better than it came so let's do that So I'm finished sanding and you can kind of see just how bad it was. I'm not sure how well it'll show on camera, but this one was not that bad. It was mostly just the edges on the inside and on the outside that were bad. And then if you look at this one, you can tell that if it'll focus, it really was not good at all. Um, 
I mean, there's a lot here that was not even, there's a lot here that was not even, the inside was not even, there's still some like low and high spots on this area, but I figure it's fine and because most of it's flat. So yeah, it's not at all flat. So you probably need to sand this if you're doing this install. So since we have the carburetor off, uh, you can see that this intake manifold is quite dirty. That's because there's an oil leak from the valve cover. So we went to get some gasket sealer yesterday and we also picked up, I don't know if it'll show well on camera, but we picked up a valve cover gasket. So we're also gonna do that now. Okay, so we clean everything off with a degreaser and then we sprayed it down with water to get rid of it. It's not perfect by any means, but it's a whole lot better than the entire intake manifold being covered in oil and the valve cover having oil all over it. So let's take the valve cover off and replace the gasket. Now that we have the valve cover on, it's time to grind down the adapter plate so that it'll fit, and then we can start installing the carburetor.
So we now have everything hooked up to the car. We have the fuel line hooked up here. We also blocked this off, which originally went to the canister. We used a big vacuum plug for that. Um, I've seen people use uh, lines with a bolt in it, so that's an option. We uh, hooked up the choke, and we also uh, put the return spring on the throttle. So everything is done for the most part, except the last step is going to be to make an EGR plate to block this off so that we don't have any problems there. Um, these bolts, these are not the original bolts that came with it. You can use the original bolts, but you will have to shorten them. But these are just shorter bolts. So you could do that or just shorten the bolts that came with it if you don't have other bolts. So yeah, let's go make that plate. Carburetor is on and everything is connected, so let's see if it'll start. So it starts, it runs better than before by far. All we need to do now is put on the air filter and the breather filter. So something that I forgot to mention before was uh, this line here goes into the carburetor and it goes to the distributor and that is for your vacuum advanced timing. Now the line that is factory has a little joint that goes to something over here, right? And so that's not going to work. So you're going to want to get a replacement hose. For now what I've done, however, because I didn't have a replacement hose was I've just taken a random vacuum line that was extra that came off of the stock carb. This is not something that you should probably do, but I'm doing it anyways because I need something that will make it just run for now, but I'm going to replace this so you should find like a, if, if you have no other option, you should find a random vacuum hose and just use that. However, I wouldn't recommend that as a permanent fix. So something I didn't see anyone else mention was this breather filter here. So it's meant to go 0.35 inch to 0.5 inch. And for some reason, my like tube that comes out the top is a 9 16th, so it just wouldn't fit. So I'm not sure if that's something that's wrong with my valve cover or something that it's like expanded over time or something, but it would not fit over the valve cover. So what we did was we took a drill and we just slightly made the hole bigger and that worked however i'm not sure if you'll have to do that um if you do it should be fine but i don't i didn't see anyone talk about this so i figured it was worth mentioning that you're gonna have to maybe do that so now the install of the carburetor is actually finished however i'm not completely done just yet 
Now I need to remove the mess of wires and the ECU from the truck. I'm not going to go in detail on how to do that because that would be a whole other video. Fleet Garage already has a really good video on it, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to watch that to learn how to do it. Uh, so yeah, let's do that real quick. So, the carburetor is installed, the wiring harness is gone, the ECU is gone, everything's finished. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.